All right. So anatomy can be divided into microscopic anatomy and macroscopic anatomy or growth anatomy. So microscopic anatomy means you got to use a microscope to see the structures. In the boundaries of microscopic anatomy are established by the equipment used. So under microscopic anatomy, you've got two different kinds. You have the study of the structure and function of cells or cytology. Cyto is a root word that means cell. And histology is a study of structure and function of tissues. Histo means tissues, okay? Now, just like there's microscopic anatomy, there's macroscopic anatomy or gross anatomy. These are studies, structures that are large enough you can see with your eyes. So this would include surface anatomy, things you can see on the surface, superficial markings, regional anatomy, so specific areas like the trunk, neck, or the head, or systemic anatomy where you're looking at structure of particular organ systems. So if you want to study the muscular system or the skeletal system, okay? We also have developmental anatomy. So here you're studying changes that happen between conception and physical maturity. Okay, so over the course of the development of an organism. And then there's embryology, which has to do with just the first two months of development. That's all part of anatomy. And this is coming again from the full notes. It's in that week one module, okay? Physiology, remember, anatomy deals with structure. Physiology deals with function. Thank you. All right, so with human physiology, you can break that into different types. You have cell physiology, which has to do with functions of cells. Special physiology deals with specific organs, okay? Function of specific organs, like cardiac physiology deals with function of the heart. Systemic physiology deals with function of specific organ systems. Like cardiovascular physiology is a cardiovascular system function. And pathological physiology deals with disease. Anytime you see patho, like a pathologist deals with, who studies diseases, okay? So if you've worked in a hospital, people may have to send things down to the pathology lab for testing, you know, to confirm if something is a tumor or if it's benign or it's malignant. So that's pathology. Okay, so patho pathological physiology studies effects of disease on how systems, organ systems or organs function. Okay. All right, so let's pause there. So I'm gonna ask you a few questions. You can talk to your partner, try to figure these out. So, all right, explain the difference, difference between microscopic and macroscopic anatomy to the person sitting next to you, okay? Some of you will have to be kind of creative. If there's three, you may have to kind of partner up with the group of three, but let's go ahead and do that. So talk to your partner. <laughs> You can practice at home if you're watching live or watching later. You can try to answer those questions yourself. All right, so let's come back in. So hopefully that at least gives you a way to kind of in your brain know the different kinds of anatomy and physiology. So let's move on to levels of organization. So 
the, the things that we learn in this class, you know, the principles of structure determining function are going to be that works at all the levels. Okay. So as, as we're learning these principles, you're going to have to sort of in your brain remember, even when we're studying an organ system, that organ system is composed of organs. That organ system, or that organ in that organ system is composed of cells, right? And you're going to have to go all the way down and all the way up. And you can know, hey, this organ system actually doesn't work just by itself. It, inter it interacts with other organ systems. So you have to keep it all straight, okay? Um, so you have to be able to kind of shift levels, all right, in your brain. So if we start out the smallest level, it's the chemical or molecular level, okay? I would just say, just, just say chemical level, like for, for the sake of your exams, because um, you're gonna have to organize these on an exam and put them in order. And I might say from smallest to largest or largest to smallest. And so you gotta go either way, um, but you gotta know the levels, okay? At the chemical level, it's composed of atoms and molecules. Atoms are your smallest units of matter that are stable, okay? Technically atoms have parts and we'll get into that in the next chapter, but they're not really stable on their own, okay? So you can put atoms together and make molecules, okay? So like carbon dioxide, CO2, it's a molecule. H2O, water is a molecule, okay? That's atoms and molecules exist at the chemical level of organization because that's, that's chemistry at that point, right? You take all these molecules and put them and they interact with each other, you start making organelles, which are essentially cell components. Those organelles start working together, you get cells. And that's your basic structural, structural and functional unit of life, okay? So technically the levels underneath are not considered life. It's, you know, it's life at the cellular level, okay? And so that's the next level. So we go, so atoms and molecules are at the chemical level. Organelles and cells are sort of at the cellular level, okay? So you take cells that are working together to form some function, you get a tissue. That's the tissue level of organization. All right, we'll learn in chapter four, different kinds of tissues. Take some tissues that work together, forming, you know, performing certain functions that are related, you get organs and that's the organ level of organization. Take some organs that are working together to form related functions, you get an organ system and that's at the organ system level of organization. Okay. Then larger than that, you may get up to the organismal level. Okay, put all the organ systems together. All right, so just wanna make sure that you kind of know the levels and then the components of each level. Okay, and you gotta go both from smallest to largest, largest to smallest. So I'm just, I'm telling you that now. So you, when, that, when you see that question, you're not like, he didn't tell us we we're gonna have to do that. I did, <laughs> but it's, it's not a hard question. It really isn't. Um, that's one of those where you wanna get your full points on it, right? And you wanna make sure you keep it straight so that you, know, you, you get all the points. So, all right. And again, structure determines function. So the organization at each level is determining your characteristics and your functions at the levels above it, okay? Because everything builds on itself, right? So if you have something that's affecting the system, affects the components of that system. So if there's something going on at the heart, it's gonna affect other parts of the cardiovascular system, right? something happens at the kidneys, it's gonna affect other parts of the urinary system, okay? All right. So before we start going into 
organ systems. Okay. Um, and we're going to do a lot of that in lab next week. So we're going to kind of skim through that for, um, you know, for the sake of time. Uh, let's see. What I will say is you got 11 organ systems. Integumentary. Yeah, that's your skin, your hair, and your nails. Skeletal systems, your bones. Muscular system. Nervous system. You know, your brain, your spinal cord, your nerves. Endocrine system, you have your glands that make hormones, cardiovascular system, your heart and your blood vessels, lymphatic system, lymph nodes, ducts, respiratory system, lungs, trachea, etc., cetera, uh, bronchi, digestive system, you have your esophagus, your stomach, intestines. All right, urinary system, that's your you know, kidney, your ureter, urinary bladder, Right, urethra. So, um, reproductive systems, male and female. So, that's all the organ systems for the sake of AMP1. We focus on integumentary, skeletal, muscular, and nervous. Okay. So, the rest of those organ systems are covered in AMP2. All right. We just, you know, you'll get a quick overview in lab on all of the. So what you will need to know in your e-text, you need, don't worry about the page number because it's an e-text, so the page numbers aren't really relevant unless you order the paper version. And I do want to make sure you know when you get the, the uh, e-text, I think it does give you an option if you want to pay extra and have a loose leaf copy or some other copy sent to you. If you feel like the e-text just doesn't work for you, um, if you've got the extra funds and you want to get the paper version, have it sent to you. Okay, that's your call. Uh, we just didn't want to require you to get it because it costs a lot more money. Okay, uh, and you can get it in a hard copy, hardbound book, or you can get a loose leaf where you just put it in a binder, and that's a lot cheaper than having it bound. Um, but you do need to know the names of the organ systems. You do need to know the functions, and again, we'll do that in lab. Um, so let's let's pause and want you to go over with your with your partner. Let's talk about levels of organization. So I want one of you to go ahead and discuss the levels of organization from largest to smallest. Let's go ahead and do that. And you can do this at home as well. All right, let's talk about now that we've talked about organ systems and levels of organization, let's talk about homeostasis and system integration. So like I said before, the organ systems don't really just live independently. Like we're gonna study them each one, but they really don't just work independently. They're all connected. They're interconnected and interdependent. Okay, and they're basically packaged all together. Right, so all the organs are just kind of together. So concept, big concept for this class you'll see throughout the course is this concept of homeostasis. And then if y'all don't figure it out for me quick, I mean, if you've had me for another class, you know this, but I'm big on concepts, like what's the big picture? So homeostasis is a big picture thing that you want to know. So highlight, star, whatever it is that you do, uh, no, that's a big concept for me, okay? Structure determines function, levels of organization, that's big. Homeostasis is big too. So what it is, is just saying you have a stable environment inside your body, okay? And it's really our foundation for all modern physiology. So all of our, all of our understanding of how the body functions, okay? So homeostatic regulation then means how you adjust your physiological systems, your functional systems to preserve or maintain homeostasis, okay? And remember I said, all these systems work together and the reality is life happens, stuff happens. You know, it doesn't mean that your, your levels stay the same forever. It just means 
your body has to weigh the, has to be able to compensate. If there's a change, you got to be able to, your body has to know what's normal and bring it back. Okay. You got a thermostat, right? In your house, you have it set to 70 degrees and it gets to be 73 degrees in your house. What happens? Well, it's hot, but then what happens? Your AC should cut on, right? To cool your room, right? So, but now what if, what if it's 67 in your house? The heater kicks in, right? To bring you back to 70. So that's essentially the main form of homo homeostatic regulation, how it works. So you have auto regulation, extrinsic regulation. These are two mechanisms. So auto regulation happens when your activities in your cell tissue organ or system change automatically based on what's, what happens in the environment, okay? So if, you, if you're in a situation where, you know, you get really scared of something, it's in, your body has a natural automatic reaction to that. If it's too hot, if it's too cold, your body has a certain re automatic reaction to that, okay? That's auto-regulation. Extrinsic regulation results from activities either of either your nervous system or your endocrine system. Okay, so both organ systems can control or adjust activities of different organ systems at the same time. All right, um, but they are they are sort of your body's control center. Okay. The nervous system can control through nerves and nerve impulses. Endocrine system can control through hormones. Okay. All right. Nervous system uses rapid, short term, very specific responses. It's fast. Okay. Endocrine system is relatively slow in comparison. It uses chemical messengers. So, all right. That's, that's, that might sound fancy. It just means. It has hormones, hormones are chemicals, okay? And those chemicals have a function. And they tell your body what to do. You know, a messenger sends a message, right? It's a chemical that sends a message. They affect organs and tissues around your body. So homeostatic regulation usually is gonna involve three parts. You have a receptor, a control center, and an effector. So you have the receptor, and it's going to be sensitive to some stimulus, some change in your environment. Okay? So you get some change. The receptor senses that. Okay? Then the receptor is going to send some information to the control center, okay? Or integration center. Okay, it's processing that information it received from the receptor. Then the effector gets commands from the control center. Okay, so the control center is processing, having to make a decision on what we're gonna do. Okay, then it's going to send information to the effector to do something. Okay, and so it's going to have a direct or an indirect effect on the stimulus. So you got to sense something's happening, then you got to process that information, then you got to make a decision, and then you got to do something. Right? It's not enough to think about it. You got to do something, right? So now we get into feedback mechanisms. Okay? So you have negative feedback and positive feedback. Negative feedback is what you get most of the time. All right? So it's, this is a mechanism that opposes any variation from the normal limit. Okay? It's like thermostat. Anytime you get too hot or too cold, it's going to do something, okay? Get you back to the limit, all right? So you have a, a normal range. It gets too high or too low out of that range, you got to do something, 
Okay. So your body's thermostatic temperature control is just like an AC uh, thermostat. Okay. Body gets too hot, start sweating. Makes you cool down. Get too cold, shiver, right? Okay, helps you warm up. Thermal regulation means control of body temperature. Okay. Positive feedback, on the other hand, the stimulus is producing some response that enhances that stimulus. Okay, so it keeps going in that direction. This is obviously rare, it's uncommon. Most of the time you want it to go back to normal. There are a few times where you don't. All right, so it's important in controlling physiological processes or functional processes that have to be complete, completed quickly, okay? Example they give you here is, is labor, okay? So, if, well, you know, mother's having a child, do you want the contractions to get weaker over time or stronger over time? You want them to get stronger, why? So you can get the baby out, right? You don't want the baby staying there for that long a time during labor. Okay, you don't want that for the mother or the baby. So there are, there are a few instances where you want positive feedback. Another instance is blood clotting. Okay, when your body starts making a blood clot, it actually speeds up and makes that more rapid. So this is A&P. So y'all are in, want to go into healthcare. Most of you either you want to be a healthcare professional or maybe you want to be a coach. Uh, PE teacher, physical education teacher, um, you kind of need to understand the body, right? And so disease is a part of medicine, healthcare. And it's just a state when homeostatic regulation is failing because of infection, okay? Some injury, some genetic abnormality, all right? And then your organ systems start malfunctioning. Okay, because of you know some some sort of regulation fails, some some stimulus happened. Okay, and you're not your body's not able to, to recover. All right, so let's take a break. I want one partner to explain homeostasis and homeostatic regulation generally. Okay, let's go ahead and you can do this at home. All right. So the comment was made, you know, is negative feedback bad and positive feedback good? No, they can both be good depending on the situation. Negative feedback opposes the direction of the stimulus. Positive feedback goes in the same direction as the stimulus. All right, so transitioning from homeostasis to anatomical directions and naming, okay? So anatomists have to basically create maps of your body to be able to, to have a common language and figure out how to communicate with each other about you know, where, where they're looking at on your body. So superficial anatomy, basically what they can see on the surface, right? So on your skin, so, Standard anatomical illustrations are gonna show your body in anatomical position. So what is anatomical position? It means your hands are at your sides, okay? Palms facing forward, okay? All right, so if I'm, the person's laying down, basically it can be either supine or prone, face up or face down, but basically, hands in the same direction as the face. Okay, that's anatomical position. All right. So that so you probably will see a question asked you about anatomical position. So you want to make sure you know hands are facing forward. Okay. All right. Two different approaches to describing anatomical regions in your body. So physicians use quadrants. Quad just means there's four, right? Quad is four, all right? Anatomists use regions. We like to be a little more specific, 
okay? So we'll get into the quadrants and the regions in the lab. I just wanted you to know why there's two different ways of doing it, okay? Anatomists usually want to be a little more specific. So there's nine regions. But physicians are going to use four quadrants. All right, so there are also directional terms for the body. And we're, again, we're going to do that in lab. So, you know, don't, we're not going to cover that here today, but know that we are going to do that. But you will need to know for the lecture exam, anatomical landmarks, so like structures on the body. You will need to know anatomical regions or parts, you know, regions of the body. And you'll need to know directional terms. You're going to learn that in lab. Also, you can get it in your in your e-text. You can read it there. Um, you can also read it in the lab study guide. So, and make sure for both lecture and lab, you look at the study guides. I, we try to be real clear to tell you what you need to study. Um, so we don't want you studying the wrong stuff, right? We want you to get a good grade. We know it's a lot of material. We want you to do well. So make sure you look at that. All right. Also, these full notes, make sure you're looking at them because there are test questions come directly from the full notes. They might not be in the e-text, but they'll be in the full notes, okay? All right. Sexual anatomy. Three planes describe relationships of the human body in three dimensions. All right, so first we're gonna cover transverse plane. So it's right angle to the long axis of the body. So this is long axis. Perpendicular, a right angle, 90 degrees this way. This, this is a horizontal cut, all right? So y'all seen the CT scans, the digital ones where it looks like it's kind of going through the person's body. You know, any plane that cuts the body like this is transverse, okay? Horizontal. And you create a superior portion above and an inferior portion below. Okay, now we also have frontal plane or coronal plane. Okay, so here we cut the body this way where you have a front part and a back part that's frontal. Okay, so if you remember for the name, if you've got a front portion that's frontal plane, okay, divide you into front, which is anterior, and back, which is posterior. We also have the sagittal plane. It's parallel to the long axis of the body. All right, so it extends from front to back, divides the body into left and right halves or sections. So if we cut this way like this, that's sagittal, okay? Now, if it's right down the middle, we can call that mid-sagittal, all right? But it's, it's still sagittal, all right? So we have transverse, frontal, Sagittal, okay? Transverse, frontal, sagittal, all right? So I'm just gonna do the hand signs so you tell me which one it is. Okay, all right. Y'all are anonymous, okay. So, serial reconstruction. So here, you choose one sectional plane, make a series of sections at small intervals. So it allows you to analyze complex structures. So basically what that means is you pick one of those three and then you just section the whole body in little sections all the way through, okay? So you're able to kind of essentially flow through the body and see it that, through that section all the way through. Okay, because what you see on a transverse plane here, you'll see heart, lungs, etc. You know, down here you're going to see digestive system, right? So it depends on the same plane, just depends on what part of the body you want to study. Okay, so up here, if you're doing transverse, you're going to get the brain, right? So Body cavities. All right, so what you need to know here is, you know, when you think of cavities, you think of your teeth getting messed up, right? 
but a, what a cavity is is a space now a cavity in your teeth is bad because you're not supposed to have spaces in your teeth but it's, there are parts of your body where you're supposed to have spaces all right and they house things so they protect and cushion your organs all right so they're going to allow for changes in size and shape of the organs there so they don't distort the organs and tissues around it okay so it kind of forms a boundary okay so again we'll get into this in lab but you will need to know locations of each body cavity and what each uh, organs the body well each what organs are in each body cavity so dorsal means the back of the body like if i was a shark and had a dorsal fin that's the back of the body so dorsal body cavity is said to have a cranial cavity okay housing your brain and spinal cavity capturing your spinal cord right the ventral body cavity ventral means front okay also known as coelom it's going to surround your respiratory system organs your cardiovascular system organs digestive organs your urinary organs your reproductive organs all that's considered ventral okay so we'll get into more detail about the different cavities in lab, but I just wanted to introduce that to you. All right, so during development, your diaphragm, right? So those of us who think we can sing a little bit, you know, we talk about using the diaphragm, project that voice out, right? So um, it divides your ventral body cavity into the thoracic cavity, which is superior to the peritoneal cavity, which includes your abdominal pelvic cavity, okay? So, but that's kind of right below your lungs, okay? Okay, so by birth, your thoracic cavity is gonna have two pleural cavities. Okay, pleural is a root word for the area around the lungs. So you have one that contains each lung and a pericardial cavity. Cardi has to do with heart, right? So it's, uh, it's gonna, pericardial cavity surrounds the heart. So um, abdominal pelvic cavity, contains, so again, thoracic cavity has your pleural cavity around your lungs, pericardial cavity around your heart. Okay, good there? Okay, peritoneal cavity. Well, actually, before we get there, we'll start, start with the abdominal pelvic cavity. Consists of your abdominal cavity, right? And your pelvic cavity. Okay, your pelvic cavity contains your peritoneal cavity, which is essentially a, chamber lined with the membrane, and we'll learn what serous membranes are in chapter four. But that's, has, it contains what we call the peritoneum, okay? So basically in your dorsal cap, body cavity, you have your thoracic cavity, abdominal pelvic cavity, okay? Does that make sense? Thoracic, abdominal pelvic. And abdominal pelvic, you separate into abdominal and pelvic. All right, so sexual anatomy and clinical technology, I'm getting a little medical in here. So you have important radiological procedures that provide information about your body systems, include things like your scanning techniques, you use beams of radiation. Your methods that involve ingesting radioactive materials. So some people have to go in for some of these scans. They have to drink uh, some materials before they go in uh, so that you can see that on the MRI or CT scan. You also have the ultrasound, x-rays. Uh, there's advantages and disadvantages to each technique. So that's why they may pick one over another, okay? So just want you to think about that in the context of what you're learning this week and next week, because again, you're not learning this stuff just to learn it. You're learning because you're going to be using a lot of it, right? So you might be working in a radiology unit as a nurse, right? Or you might be working as an OTA 
and have to, you know, look at people's MRIs or, or uh, CT scans or x-rays, right? So you know how to treat them best. So that all has context. All right. So let's go ahead and discuss with your partner the components. One partner can discuss the components of the dorsal body cavity. And you can do this at home as well. And then we'll also have your other partner discuss the components of the ventral body cavity. All right, so looking at the modules, just wanna make sure you know kind of what's in here for you. So you've got, there was a pretest. I put last week's video or last class's video in here. Uh, here are the notes, okay? So just wanna make sure that you knew these are up here. Here's a PDF for the, of, the, of a PowerPoint. Sometimes I'll do the PowerPoint, sometimes I'll do the full notes. It just kind of depends on the chapter. Uh, but this is one where I wanna make sure you see what's in the full notes. All right, also right here, exam one review, all right? So we're gonna go through that in just a minute. Also, I've got a YouTube playlist here on intro to the human body, links to the e-text. Then I got a bunch of games here, okay? So you may have to make sure your, your settings on your computer or your phone are set up so you can play them. But a lot of the topics that we're gonna do in lab, as far as learning the quadrants and the regions and the turn anatomical regions and turn body landmarks, you know, you can play those because uh, it just it's gonna take practice. Okay, uh, body cavities. Okay, got some MP3s you can listen to, some matching, some quizzes you could take. These are not uh, grades, these are just for you to practice. Okay, so watch, and then here's, I guess, the video from yeah, last class. All right, so. All right, so. We're gonna to go to study exam one, study review. All right, so I see some of you already looking at it, so that's good. All right, these are gonna be your friend, okay? Y'all are gonna to get to know these real well. So for chapter one, you know, we went, the things you need to make sure you know are six steps of the scientific method, no scientific classification of humans, characteristics of Chordata, Mammalia, Primates, Hamididae, Definition of biology, characteristics of living organisms, definitions of physiology, microscopic anatomy, cytology, histology, gross anatomy, surface anatomy, regional anatomy, systemic anatomy, developmental anatomy, embryology, human physiology, cell physiology, special physiology, system physiology, patho patholo pathological physiology. Sounds like a lot, but I mean, really, if you see the word, you know what the words mean, right? So shouldn't have to memorize too much there. All right, levels of organization, definitions in the order of the levels, major functions of each organ system. You'll do that in lab. No anatomical position, we cover that today. The quadrants, abdominal pelvic quadrants, organs that fit in the abdominal pelvic quadrants. We'll do that in lab. Abdominal pelvic regions, anatomical landmarks, anatomical regions and directional terms. Transverse plane, frontal, coronal plane, sagittal plane, we did that today. Location of the body cavities and what organs fit in them. Okay, we started that um, this in today and we'll cover that again in lab, functions of the body cavities. All right, definitions of homeostasis, homeostatic regulation, receptor, control center, effector, and disease. Cover that today, right? And possible short answer essay question, okay? You will not have any essay questions on the quiz, okay? This is for exam. However, you could have a multiple choice question about that topic. So it doesn't mean don't study that topic. It just means you won't have to write about it on a quiz, okay? Are we clear on that? Okay, difference between positive and negative feedback. So again, that's why I was bringing up, don't, if you get that question, don't write positive feedback is telling you I, I did a good job, you know, so, all right. So I think we'll, we'll actually cover chapter two next week. I don't think I'm gonna get into it today because it's, uh, chemistry is, I'll, I'll, I'll let y'all, I'll let y'all have a little bit of a break. What I do wanna do is just talk about what we're gonna discuss. 
So, well, actually, I'll probably do that in a chapter two video. So we'll, we'll, we'll cover that next time. But basically, now you know where to go to find out what to study. Okay. So, all right. Anytime you see like these dot, dot, dots, that means look in the full notes and find the fin what finishes that sentence. Okay. Because you might have to complete the sentence on a test. Okay. So, want to make sure you saw that. So, all right. So, let's work on your exit tickets. Let's go ahead and, and work on them. That was actually remembered, okay. which is saying a lot for me right now. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, okay, so so I may pull them up before class. So I my, I don't intend for you to do them at home. Okay. Those only only reason you would ever do those at home is if you were watching online or you missed class and out. Because usually what I will tell you is if you miss class um, and it's an excused absence, something, you know, sickness or, you know, some emergency situation, I'll send you a message saying, watch the video, do the, the bell ringer and the exit ticket. Let me know when you've done that. I'll go back and check. And once you've done that, I will basically change it to being a, um, an excused absence. Okay. But yeah, like when they pop up, don't feel like you have to do those right then um because part of the problem i have in, in canvas is when i set times sometimes the times don't work the way they're supposed to and then they get uh, locked or on the canvas app it's kind of difficult for me to actually set the times correctly so um, so if you see them pop up when you're at home don't think that you're supposed to be doing those at home you do those here um you may sometimes see a just general discussion those you would do at home but i don't i don't assign those very often um but the ones that are bell ringer exit ticket you do at home or sorry the ones you do they're bell ringer and exit ticket you do here in class not at home all right <clears throat> 